Oh, we've been muted the whole time. Oh, oh good no. Lord. Oh, no. Technical difficulties. <laughs> well, let's start all over again. <laughs> I'm Ken. This is George. <laughs> we, we hope you all could read lips. That was a great <laughs> session. It was great. <laughs> all righty then. Well, let's just start all over again. So, sure. Yeah. So, Gentle Strong Tour, we're on the road. We're on day three. Oh, no, day, day four. four. Yes, yeah, so we did San Diego, Irvine, Burbank. San uh, Jose today. San Jose today and yeah. Berkeley tomorrow. Berkeley tomorrow. We're doing Berkeley. We've moved from Walnut Creek to Berkeley. Berkeley just gives us uh, everybody a better shot at getting there. Walnut Creek can still get there, but it gives it a better, uh, better ride to the folks in San Fran and Oakland. And, you know, try to make it out because Berkeley's going to be a great spot. We're in San Jose today. So if you're further the other direction, you want to get someplace and see us, come out to San Jose. The numbers have been really great. We've had, uh, you know, we definitely, owe, we've, we've exceeded our expectations for this week just because of all that's going on in California. And, uh, you know, the hesitation to do things like this is still there. Uh, but got some great venues. Yesterday we were at a brewery and uh, if you've seen the pictures online, it came out great. We had a great attendance and we still had great fun. You know, we used to put the cornhole boards out and threw a few bags and we had great, uh, the brewery did their own drinks. So people had great drinks and uh, some, some very inventive drinks. Um, to say the least. Purple haze. Pur no, yeah, no, it was uh, Purple Rain. Purple Rain. It was Purple Rain in honor of Prince. And then there was one called uh, Sunday Morning, so something or other. And that was pretty spicy. I had that one. It was pretty spicy. It was made with their own tequila. Okay. Well, pretty good stuff. Needless, needless to say, the road is uh, an interesting place. Lots of driving as usual. Um, yeah, we just rolled in, what, an hour ago? No. Yeah, <laughs> it feels <pretty> like much. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, anyway, long story short, uh, you know, lots of – so, first of all, some housekeeping, right? If you're in southwestern U.S., right, and you go to Channel Strong uh, or uh, msbinitiative.com, click on Channel Strong, you'll see the list of – all of the remaining dates, right? We have Bur we have San Jose today, Berkeley tomorrow. Next oh, week San, we have San Jose, so. San Jose today, Berkeley tomorrow. Yeah. And then we have Salt, Salt Lake, Lake Monday, Vegas. Vegas and Scottsdale. then we're in Phoenix, Scottsdale, Tempe area for right. a day and a half, two days. For the big, big. That just came out yep. yesterday. They yep. announced that yesterday. So thank you very much. We're excited for that. And then lastly, we kind of anchor the whole event in, uh, in Pax 8 H HQ backyard yeah. <laughs> uh, in Denver. It will so. be at an MSP, though, not at Pax 8's backyard. Yes, but yes. So, but quite close. It'll be well attended, I assume. I'm assuming as well. We yes. have a lot of partners out in the Denver area, and, um, and it doesn't have to be partners. You know, anybody in the Denver area, if you're an MSP, you should come out and check this event out. It's going to be a great time. I, I think some few, maybe a couple of Pax 8 people might. My just trip just a couple, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. We have a couple on the bus with us at that this point. This is true. So. This is true. It'll be a good time. Uh, so, so there's that one. Obviously, our monthly giveaways, MSPNiship.com under giveaways. And then lastly, uh, this session, every other session, whether it's muted or not, <laughs> is on MSPNiship.com under session. So that's all out of the way. Again, a big thank you to uh, little, little son there. Big thank you to the Big Big for announcing uh, that we are working together uh, at their event in in uh, Scottsdale area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so very excited for that, right? I think there's uh, a lot of MSPs coming in, kind of not from the area, nope. nor a national pool. Yeah. Right. You know, and then, so. of course, if you're in the area, you're going to have an opportunity to come out. And there may be, not sure it's official yet, but there may be some giveaways to stay at the event for free. Yes. So if you're in the area and you got a couple days, you know, come out for the event first but you might have a chance at winning a shot at becoming you know going to the event and seeing all that's going on and i just got off the phone with our boy brett who was talking about how excited he is about the event itself and then also us coming into town with it and uh, he can't say enough about being a part of the big big and, and the event and what it means and you know he just basically said you know this is a this isn't a large group by you know data sense of the you know, word and things like that but he said the group that's there is all mature MSPs and they all feed off each other. Well, I mean, that's the whole purpose of an accountability group, right, peer group. Right. Uh, you know, like 
hey, we all love tech talking shop, but I think when everybody realizes where you fit in the chart right. and you benchmark off each other, yep. I think that really that really changes things, right? Because yep. then you you know then it's a lot less of I need to do this and uh oh I'm really not doing what I'm supposed to. Do. Well, yeah, I'm too busy. Yeah, so that's the difference between staying in the weeds and getting out of the weeds. Hundred percent. Yeah. So um, interesting talk yesterday. Yeah. Um, about and listen. Remote's been happening for a long time, yep. well before pandemic times. Right. right. But I was, I was talking to a guy yesterday at uh, Channel Strong. And he's like, yeah, you know, we uh, two, two things out of the same guy. First thing was, hey, if you want to come back to the office, they were like mandating vaccinations to go back to the office. But they're like, so many people didn't come back to the office and we're working remote that they're like, well, if you're working from home, you know, right, yeah, right. like, Whatever you do at your house is up to you, right? Yep, yep. And he was kind of joking, like his, his one millennial guy, you know, was wearing the mask inside of his house, and like, you know, in the bedroom with yeah. the, you know, with the fan. And I was just right. like, he's like, dude, you can take the mask off. But anyway, long story short, I think people have finally started to figure out the time zone shift helps them. Oh, absolutely. Right? Like, yeah. finally, people are realizing that if you hire in different time zones and, and change, like, stack things differently. Right. Yeah it really helps, right? So like this California MSP was getting a lot more business from the East Coast. And the guy was saying how his Calendi link, you know, like people were like, why don't you have meetings before 11 o'clock Eastern time? And like, it finally triggered him. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, like they're finally starting to understand that, hey, you know, there's actually a benefit to staggering your people in different right. countries. You can extend your, extend your company's hours, right? Yeah. On both sides. Yeah. 100%. So that was a cool, like, I, I love that that realization's finally hitting. You know, like we've seen that for a long time, but like it never trickled down, but right. now it's, it's for real. And then <laughs> the other thing that came out of this MSP was um, a lot of MSPs now seem to be pushing down SOC 2, yep. SOC 2 internally. And uh, we were talking about how much that costs and what's involved and, um, you know, like that it's not Taxi, taxi cool. What? I assume. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. <laughs> so we we're talking about that process, right? I know there's a lot of vendors out there that help with this, right? But like, it's a year process. Oh just yeah. To get it, get yes. it off the ground. Right? It's actually, it doesn't even matter how big or how small. It's still a year process because yeah. they make it. It's part of the vet, vetting of the of the uh, control. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to actually, even if you cut everything you need done quick, you still have to go through that year process of making sure that everything's in place and doing what it's supposed to do. It's pretty pretty interesting and every person in the company has to comply has to be a part of it you have to make sure your whole business is taking tests and understand they, they did means. they did say that things take a lot longer to do like just even to roll out anything new oh yeah yeah which that's frustrating check boxes like, well but like when you're small and you're nimble right, right. you can get things done and i feel like <laughs> it adds a whole nother layer Right. A bureaucracy, the red tape, we always call it, right? <laughs> yeah, we're getting, <laughs> we're, we're getting back, right? We're getting pitched out by the sun. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lighting, lighting concerns, right? So, anyway, so. Where's that boom? Put the boom over here. Yeah, yeah. Some shade. Yeah, right over here. Where's the tent? <laughs> um, so, I thought that was interesting, right? You don't use tents with you anymore. They blow away while you're doing Yeah, that's action. true. Right. You remember that one? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it was very interesting to hear that a lot of MSPs, even not very big MSPs, are starting to go down that SOC 2 road. Oh, absolutely. And it's not cheap. No. I mean, it, it's 100, six, 100 grand. Six figure. Yeah. 100 grand, right? I mean, I, I, easy. Just that first year, right? Right, right, right. So very intriguing that, you know, we're not even talking about the MSP asking the vendor. We're talking about the MSP themselves. Right. And then they're using that as their part of their marketing approach to potentially get new business. Yeah, yeah. No, it's... But I, I just... But let's talk about the flip side of that for a second. How often is the owner of a medical practice or a law firm or an accounting or a retail store they even know what SOC 2 is? No. So, like, how does that help in the market? Honestly, that I do not know. I mean, I think what people are worried about is preparing for the future. With everything that's coming down, 
it's another way of saying, hey, we're, you know, we're compliant, right? But compliant, like, I what, how does that help your retail store? Oh, I don't think it does. I mean, from a standpoint of that, you, and you know that, but are you saying that you're seeing little retail stores doing this? Or are you talking about the MSPs? No, but, but I, just, I, just, I just wonder from a marketing and sales aspect, because yeah. that was how this was positioned. Right. How exactly is that helping them bring new customers to the front door? No, it's not. I just, I mean, are you going to stop shopping at your favorite place because they're not SOC compliant? No. SOC 2 compliant? Like, I, I was salty last night at Chipotle when I walked in. They said, what meat are you going to get? And I said, chicken. Yeah, why does it matter? And I'm like, oh, well, all these people are sitting in front of you. Oh, we're back. Sorry about that. All this, all these people sitting in front of you are waiting for beef. Right. That's right. what I cared about. I didn't care about sock too. At, at yeah, Portland, right. So, but they ran out of beef. They, they did. They ran out of beef. <laughs> they did. They absolutely did. Oh wait, not just beef. No chips for your salsa. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I see our friend Darren is. Hey, Darren. Lots of Chick Fil A's out here, man. Now I know how you got all your points, buddy. Yeah, right. It's like 100%. on every other quarter. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 even in the place where we were told there's no food, we saw a lot of chicken. Well, we also saw a lot of in that. We saw a lot of everything. Yeah. Some of those places, that was pretty amazing. The, the spaces that literally had, was so busy, it had a mobile here and a mobile here. Yeah, it's like two <laughs> mobiles competing against each other. I'm like... They weren't even on the other side of the highway. They were on the other side of the food place. Yeah. Like, that's how much food was in there. It yeah. Was crazy. Yeah. Nuts. And of course, we pulled into the only gas station that the lights are on, but nobody's home. Oh, yeah, yeah. We pulled into a gas station. There's like a chain around the door. <laughs> Pumps, yeah, all the lights are on. Yeah, it's great. By the way, <clears throat> gas is expensive here. Just a little. Just a little. I don't think I've ever filled up. A, I mean, that's that's not a huge truck that you're driving. It's a pickup truck. I don't think I've ever filled up a vehicle in, in Boston that cost me a hundred bucks or hundred and twenty bucks. It's it's just outrageously yeah. expensive. Yeah. So we were talking about the whole electric car thing. Yeah. Same dude with the soft food, and he's like, well. It's like, when we plan obviously long trips, it's not worth it. Right. I said, yeah. I mean, they have the Tesla station. Like, we see the electric charging all over the place, yeah. right? But, like, he admitted, he's like, uh, I think in 2024, 2025, California will not let you sell gas vehicles after that point. So then the guy was like, oh, they're going to put all these car dealerships on the border. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all these people are just going to cross to, to sell their, their gas. It's going to be like everything else, right? You're going to go, you're going to get one. You're just going to go someplace to get someplace else to get it. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So apparently yesterday, Apple, going on some recent news, Yeah. Apple released their, well, there is a vulnerability. Yeah. That's not what I was going to talk oh, about. Oh, well, right. Let's talk about that. So <laughs> if you haven't updated your iOS devices and your phones and your tablets and your watches, you should do that because apparently there's a very large like a zero day. Yeah, yeah, zero day vulnerability. Into this. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, I have my automatic updates, but does it actually do it? No, no. yeah, it's like it's not that fast. Yeah, you should probably talk to some of your employees because that's what I was told by them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. have automatic updates. I'm good. I'm like, it doesn't mean that the minute it comes out, your, fo- your phone's being updated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll get that message. Yeah. <laughs> um, so apparently there's vulnerabilities, zero day, update all your devices because, you know, apparently bad things are happening. But Apple yesterday also came out with their iPhone 13, iPad, thir- you know, iPad and uh, iPad mini launch of the next, you know, latest and greatest. Yeah. So you're going to give your Surface away to get an Apple device? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, listen, the iPhone's fine. Mm-hmm. The Surface is good, too. Yeah. They're they're good in their own way. Right. Yeah. You got gotcha. you. Yeah. No. And I'm not I'm not answering calls on on the tablet. <laughs> I mean, they have the duo. Yeah. Right. Have you seen the duo? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they have the duo too that they just announced, right? Right. So, but I mean, your phone needs an upgrade. <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> you need one, man. When's the two year come up? This isn't even two years old. Dude, there's no way that two years not coming up. A, that's a brand new S20, man. Nah, dude. No way. <laughs> you've, been, you've been rocking that since last year. Last year, yeah. So it's like a year old. All right. Come on. You need an early upgrade. 
Darren says, it's absolutely unbelievable how bad the current duo is. Okay. It's an Android phone. It was their first shot, dual screen. But I heard the new one, they finally upgraded all the components. Darren, so has, Darren probably has three in his electric Mustang. This is true. <laughs> you never get to live down that electric Mustang, Darren. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I actually saw somebody using the duo. It was in, I think it was like General Strong, Cincinnati. It was a purple. Oh, and a really, purple really? duo phone. Dual screen surface, yeah. So two strikes against them. Yeah. <laughs> purple duo a purple phone. microsoft duo phone so uh take that out how about t-mobile who had their own data breach recently yeah you know, came out and said uh called out samsung yesterday oh. because they weren't making phones fast enough they said they have a phone shortage and samsung should get their crap together <laughs> you're running samsung right now aren't you i am okay just want to make sure Maybe that's why I don't have a new phone because I had to wait. Yeah, well, there's you know it's a chip shortage. There actually, I think um, I forget if it was a car manufacturer or I don't know if it was a PC manufacturer, but somebody came out and said the chip shortage is still another like year and a half, two years before it'll. Yeah, right. it seems like there's a shortage of everything. I mean, like you were saying that you still haven't got your Surface laptop from work because it's been back ordered. So. I mean, people are still having the hardware problem, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, my Surface. I got a Surface that's been on order for now. That's, what, that's what I've been saying. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so you're getting a Surface? Yes. Oh, or maybe. Well, when, you know, maybe in 2024. By, by the time you get it, they'll come out the next one. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sounds All right. right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, so, interesting two stories. <laughs> Darren say. And I'll give you one or something. Let me, let me, let me see what he says. I only start to come up for a flip on the, uh, yeah. you got to pull back here again. Yeah, let, let, me, let me see what he said. He said, Ken, I'll give you a sweet deal on my S21 Ultra and I'll upgrade after you buy mine. <laughs> Actually, this is an S21 Ultra. That's what it is. So ah. Boom. boom. But Ken's, Darren, he just doesn't like Ken, the Android. Ken's S21 Ultra is like the defective edition. <laughs> Because it ain't ultra. Listen, I had to pay so I had to pay extra for that. Yeah, you paid extra for junk. That's what I had to say about that. <laughs> the food's always breaking. It's always breaking. Um, so last week, Microsoft said so clearly user error. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Darren. Absolutely, absolutely user error. Um, so last week, Microsoft said somebody came out and said Microsoft's Windows Hello. Yeah. Yeah. That they had, they were able to bypass the Windows Hello through the webcam, trick the webcam. Hmm? Hmm? Was it a twin? I don't know. Today, <laughs> Microsoft releases that they're going password free for consumer accounts. So, do you take those two things and put a bad bad recipe together? Possibly. Possibly. I mean, you could trick the the. the I'm curious how you trick it. Uh, facial recognition. They did it. Yeah, but I'd like to. We should. We should I'm gonna check pull, the details. We'll pull it up, that. man. We'll pull it up. We'll have to figure out what it is. But I'm just telling you, they tricked it. They take a photo. I think they they like. <laughs> I, I'll go back and pull the article, but I think they like did like uh, an inverse of the coloring or something, and then like you know, kind of like dark mode versus light mode. And when they flipped it around, <laughs> the camera let it through. It's definitely got to be plugged. Interesting. That's not good. Yeah. But apparently Microsoft said that they're going password lists on all consumer accounts, you know, Apple.com, formerly Hotmail, blah, blah, blah. So what about those people that don't look the same in the morning until they get ready? And then after they're ready, they look different. Lots of makeup, lots of... Well, you do realize that <laughs> obviously the face thing doesn't work when you have a mask. Right? right, right. Well, that definitely doesn't work. Okay. So now Apple's trying to come back with the fingerprint thing on the screen. Because, you know, the mask just blew up the, the whole thing. Just saying. Uh, so so that was the biggest <laughs> that was the biggest thing that came out of Microsoft land yesterday. Although Microsoft is due to have their own iPhone release style event for the next line of Surface stuff. We talked about that you know, a couple, couple sessions right, ago. That's right. coming up next week. So they kind of were like, you know, dueling to to get new announcements out. Uh, so, so there you go. 
So how about the standalone? Remember, we're in subscription land, right? We're in subscription land, people. The standalone Office 2021. Not subscription-based. The buy the, buy the perpetual right, license, right. October 5th. I wonder how many people are going to go for that. All the people who are hating subscription, probably. Wow. Right? I mean, you know you're going to see that. There are people that don't like paying month to month. I get it. So, you know, there's always going to be people yeah. that do the opposite of... But I wonder if that gets pushed. Like, I wonder if with the Microsoft price increase right, looming, right. I wonder if end users now go to their MSP saying, I'm just going to buy it. And then we'll just wait. We'll wait like a couple, like back in the day, right? You'd be like, I'm on Office 2000. Oh, Office 2013. Nah. Office 2016. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they just go, well, what's the cap on it? Uh, they just said that it's it's not going to have any updates. It's going to be locked. It's the feature set will be locked. Right. So it's not going to have any updates. Is it offering locked in with release? No new feature updates. Right. But security, obviously. Security. I, I mean, I'm low. Right. And then what I'm saying is what's the cap on how long before they say this product's outdated and you can't use it anymore? I mean, how many people do you still know using Office 2003? Oh, yeah. No, I get I it. mean, with no security updates. Uh, it's out there. Yeah. Yeah. So is Windows XP, but is it right? Yeah. <laughs> Not saying it's wrong or it's right. I'm just saying people have. It. Oh, here we go. The sun's moving fast. Yeah, my friends. The sun is moving Back fast. Up. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right. We got we got a little bit of uh, Broadway behind us for sure. So, <laughs> so oh. I don't know. Office 2021, October 15th. But there's another Microsoft uh, announcement that came out saying that um, they're now collapsing the Microsoft, was it open license? All right, I just saw that the other day. Uh, yeah, Microsoft open license to end next year. So basically they're saying that you will go through the CSP program in the pool. Right. I noticed Pax 8 now offers one-off license purchases through their portal, right? Like instead of buying a subscription, you could get a server 2019 like license right. one-off, right? So I guess they're, are they rolling up one-off purchases? Yeah, you know, they're just basically saying go the same way you go through subscriptions. Right. I think it's all going to start to, everything's going to start to go that route, right? But we have to figure out this whole pricing piece right that everybody's talking about and getting no into. no but like this would be separate uh, no but i'm just talking about it, 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 just microsoft in general right people have concerns about, well no that, that right i believe so, i believe there is actually a petition being launched within the msp community on the format changes that we talked about yeah we'll we'll see how that goes and i've also we should probably just we should try to figure out a way to, to get uh, the folks uh, that we have at Pax8 and a couple of those Microsoft folks to talk about that too, because I do notice that there are, um, they seem to have some information that doesn't seem to jive with the well, maybe, deeper dive into maybe, that. So maybe, maybe you should, maybe you should invite them to the community. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what I'm saying. Maybe we're like, trying to figure but, out the best but, way to But do there, that. I know for sure there is a petition going on. Okay. Yeah, me too. That that's being launched yeah. on the, on the format chain. Yeah. Okay. Um, so stay tuned for that. Yeah. I'm sure that'll get noisy. Of course it's going to. But it should. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so there's that. Um, stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned to your local feed, right? And we'll right. we'll see how we'll see how that comes up. So um, big news on the financial market is that this Chinese property development company, kind of like what happened in 2008 here in the U.S., is literally about to go under with like a couple trillion dollars in debt. So if all the stuff that we buy for chips and computers right, right. and containers worth of electronics are coming out of China and China's about to go through a problem and there's already a chip shortage, you can have a hard time buying stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, are you saying you want to get into the chip business? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's an easy business to get into. No. 
I was just going to say. But I can just, I can just see you. Like, Wait, the wheels, there's an opening. The, the, this is George Bardisi, folks. The wheel, there's an opening. The, the, wheel, the wheels are spinning. You're saying there's a chance. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that could get hairy, for sure. And it's already hairy, right? But this is just what's going on now. Imagine if something like that were to come to fruition where it just completely went upside down. Uh, we heard, I think it was maybe not yesterday, but in Irvine, they were saying that, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, Keith, it was yeah, Keith, it was he Keith. came, yeah, Keith yeah. came late, yeah. right? He said that he was held up by Homeland Security. Right. Yeah. Cause that's one of his, one of his customers is like the port authority or whatever. Right. right. And he was saying that container ships coming into the port were anchored off for two weeks because if anyone who works at the port got COVID, they'd have to shut the port down for 10 days. Right. So what right. they do is they have every boat docked off offshore. They quarantine, the they quarantine the for two weeks before they can pull it in and actually <laughs> download it. Really? Dude, this, <laughs> this shortage is not going to get better. No. It sounds like it's going to get a lot worse. Just complete ships being quarantined. <laughs> So, stay tuned, guys. That doesn't yeah, that, that doesn't true. sound good, and it sounds like it could get a lot worse before it gets better. Buy your TVs and your equipment now. Well, it was funny because who said it? Was it was it Kamala? I think it was Kamala who said you better start buying your Christmas presents. She didn't say this in August. She said you better start buying your Christmas presents now. I was like, what? I was like, I know the holidays start earlier and earlier, right? We talk about. Halloween and right, right. Yeah, you know, we talk about Thanksgiving, right? Like Black Friday ends up happening like a week earlier, or yeah, whatever. Right. I was like, now she's saying August. Yeah. I mean, might be a sign. Yeah. It's a sign, all right. <laughs> Line straight out of Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sign, all right. Uh, it sounds like we need to start manufacturing things here in the U.S. Yeah, that's what it sounds. That like. would be that would be a good idea, I think. Um, cats and dogs living together <laughs> end of the world biblical stuff man end of the world biblical picture stuff. the United States is this Twinkie yeah <laughs> dude are, I'm, I'm pumped for the new ghost <laughs> I am I am so so you heard like all the movies that got delayed right like yeah, I just right. saw I just saw a commercial for the James Bond one that was supposed to be out last yeah, year yeah right yeah like they've been talking about this movie for two, two years yep so, but I am pumped for the Ghostbusters. And like, there was a bunch of ones in the summer that didn't come out, right? Like Top Gun was supposed to come out. Right, yeah. Heaven so like, Earth. all these movies are like, backed up in the can, ready to go. I'm, I'm yeah. He's pumped. He's pumped, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. So how about the FCC? I'm not, I'm not even sure I like this, this story, right? <laughs> I'm not even sure I like this story, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll it out there. The FCC, wants landlords to stop screwing up your internet. This is the title of this article. It says, U.S. landlords often strike cozy arrangements with big internet service providers blocking competition. The FCC wants to take a fresh look on an old problem. Listen, what's this world coming to when the bigger problems in the world are when the feds are going to after McDonald's for not having their ice cream machines working? You believe that shit? <laughs> They're literally going, they're like, that. the Federal Trade Commission's going after the McFlurry machine. Right. Because yeah. it's never working when you pull up to a McDonald's. And it's I'm intentionally like, broken. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's that's the main reason my charge goes to Chick-fil-A, because no, no, no. it's no McFlurries. No, no, no. no. Well, Bar I, I'll, uh, Darren will tell you, the ice cream machine at Chick-fil-A doesn't break. Very rarely. See? The, they may run out of the material to make the ice cream, right? Well, did you hear why? Did you, when they dug into it, what they're already seeing, some of the McDonald's. You're talking about the well, not yeah, Chick-fil-A. Let's be no, clear. No, no. Not the Chick-fil-A side. Relax. The the McFlurry. McFlurry. Yeah, yeah. The reason why is why? they're saying that the machine can only be repaired by certain people and the machine is too hard to operate and get working. So they just don't reach out to the people. And then the flip side of that is a worker came on and said, that's not it. The machine is so hard to clean. And no one wants to turn the thing on and have to clean it. At so the it's end laziness. Of the night. Laziness. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a couple of weird things they're gonna have to tie together there. But when this becomes the issue of the federal government, 
I mean, come on. Yeah, I think we have bigger problems. So Darren says Chick-fil-A operates on a level others probably made. The other the other machines are probably made by Kaseya. <laughs> we didn't say that, folks. That was that was not us. Comment from I was people. simply just replying what was already said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but the Chick-fil-A Chick-fil-A guy, like they could run out, but it's right. never broken. Right. It's never broken. <laughs> the McFlurry machine's always broken. I think somebody wanted to create an app so that you could see, like you could check on your app before you went to McDonald's. Kind of like, like the registry where you used to be able to check the lines. And yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can yeah. check to see if the machine's working or not so that you don't waste they your time. They would never do that because nobody would ever go. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're not turning the damn thing on because they don't want to work. You know, at some point, you, you know they've already done this on the UK side, right? Where it's like the whole building has like two employees. Yeah, and it's all automated. Oh, that's right? why the kiosk started coming in. And, yeah, it's, like they literally like there's nobody. There's there's like the manager and like an assistant. And that's yep. it. Yeah, and it's not good. So the not working thing's gonna come and bite him in the ass. I'm just gonna tell you. Uh, but anyway, so the FCC says, hey, we think landlords are unfairly doing these internet deals. And so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna run a commission on this. They ran out of things to run commissions on, I guess. I mean there's plenty of things to run commissions on. Oh yeah, but not things that they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna know why people from other countries are allowed to go to the pre check one. I worked really hard to get that pre check, global entry. And there's other people who have the Nexus Bass and all this whatever. Like why are people from other countries been rolled through the pre check one? I mean, when you can't pass any of the actual questions, uh, you find a way to get them through, right? I and see. Of course, they must have, they have to be able to get through faster than yeah. everybody else. So, you know. But I wonder if they're not getting stopped and I still am. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that how it works? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sir, please stop. <laughs> Random screening. Right, right, right. Random screening. This guy's already got his glove on, ready to go. <laughs> 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 <And the> other- <laughs> Oh, I don't have finders. I don't have time to screen you. You don't speak English. You can come right through. Yeah, (laughs) not good. (laughs) Absolutely not good. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit salty about that. Yes, you should be. Wow, the sun is coming back quick. Yeah, it's California, man. It's a sunny place. I'll give him credit. Lots of good weather here, man. I thought it was always sunny in Philadelphia. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's definitely not always sunny in Philadelphia. (laughs) But it's a great, it's a great, it's a great show. Right. But it, it's definitely snowy and I get it. It was a it was a very sarcastic yeah. name for a show. It's not all sunny in Boston either. No, it's not. <laughs> Even when it is. Um <laughs> so wow. We're we're definitely uh we're definitely in there. So so <laughs> Star Starlink, right? Uh, apparently it's launching a new satellite version. More capacity, more coverage, same price. A Starlink thing starting to pick up. I mean, if you can get it. Yeah, I don't think I can get it. It's a lot of Philly. I mean, I can get it. Like, it's not a, if you can get it. It's they don't. You can't get the unit fast. Enough. Right, right, right. Back to the shipping delay thing. Right. Yeah. But there's Elon again, disrupting. I like that. I wonder what else he's using those satellites for. I don't know. I don't know. But I like. I like the disrupt. Better than running a commission. <laughs> uh, yeah, better than running a commission. So, by the way, I'm not sure, but you and I may pass out before the end of the show from the fumes coming from the bus. Well, <laughs> maybe that's why we're a little silly today. So, yeah, if we're laying sideways, please call the police. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. We have enough problems. We have enough problems being on the road. Oh, yeah, that's right, too. They'll probably come and see you on the ground and arrest you for public intoxication. This guy, not, oh, sir, are you okay? Let me call you. <laughs> sir, be proof of presidency. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny part is that would actually happen. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Nah. This isn't the post office or anything, but I'm sure it could happen. Speaking about the post oh, office. Oh, here it comes. Different story. So, obviously, you know, coming out of IT by Design, they had, like, the remnants of the hurricane oh, that yeah, hit yeah, yeah. in New Orleans. There, yeah. New Orleans is still kind of, like, not in good shape, right? right? Or whatever. And, then, like, that rolled through the Northeast, and the Northeast got, like, literally flooded. Like, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania. Okay, yeah, yeah. so... Now, 
So my post office, <laughs> you roll in, you go to like, I had to mail out stuff, or sign on the door, credit card machine. There. I'm flooding. I said, you have power? Like, where, where is this flooding? So like, even before I, to the day before I got on the plane to come, come on this trip, yeah, credit card machine still up. It's been like two weeks, three it's weeks. the new McFlurry machine. So like, I was just like, how are you running the post office? And the only thing that isn't working is a credit card machine. I don't understand. Cash money, baby. That's what it was. You had right to bring cash. You had to bring cash. Do you know what I did? Wait, wait. But then when you bring cash, they're like, sorry, we need exact change. We got to round it up. Uh, uh, oh, shortage. oh, oh, I, I brought exact change. <laughs> pennies? That's all I brought. All pennies? All, all change. <laughs> all change. I literally made him count it. I was like, here you go. <clears throat> yeah, but they should be welcoming that. They need that change because apparently there's a change. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just telling you. So I was just like, dude, you, how do you run a post office with cash? I was like, I know how you do it. Yeah. But literally, the only thing that's broken is a credit card machine. Here's your credit card machine. Stuff. Three weeks. There are ways to get a credit, three, to get a credit card. Three weeks. Her. They're like, oh, Verizon came and fixed it. It broke again. I was like, you paid, you paid Verizon for your credit card machine? <laughs> Something tells me there's more to this story. I, I, I just, like I said, it's the new McFlurry. You got to get the feds involved. Well, according to Darren, it's it's the same K. <laughs> <laughs> he has so much love. So much love. Well, Darren's very, He's very. Not bitter. Darren's very adamant about <laughs> about his feelings on the topic. No, 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 no. Um, sorry, Darren, I couldn't help but uh, but pick on you a little bit there. So, um, uh, I guess things are leaking out of. We talked last session about DataCon not happening, and so they kind of launched, I guess they're slowly like throwing nuggets out of what, I guess, stuff that would have been announced at the right. conference. So they did the Azure thing earlier in the week, right? Uh, apparently there's more stuff coming. Uh, we're hearing word of some sort of edge security solution that's been been hearing word of that for a while now. Yeah, so, but I guess like, you know, they got to do it a different way because, you know, they're not, right. maybe not have all the same eyeballs. So, so that came down, um, I guess, uh, I don't know how much news it is, but I guess we should uh, put a congratulations out to uh, Andrew at OmniNet, right? They, you know, they sold their company again. Right. So congratulations to Andrew and company. Um, always nice to play the stock market on the same stock twice and win. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, that's, that's a good, that's a good win. Yeah. Um, so lots of money being announced. Lots of money, lots of money funding rounds being announced. Uh, I talked to one guy who just accepted money, one vendor, and he said that he spent yet 80 different funding offers, and it took him two weeks, like literally 60 hours a week to go through the calls. Basically, he was narrowing down the, right, the, right. the funding, you know, VCs, PEs, whatever, until he selected them. 80. Yeah. There's just so much money on the street, man. It's crazy. Of course, they come with strings. Oh, they come with many strings. So, it's a lot, lots of, I, I have, I mean, you know, obviously the aforementioned uh, company is doing a lot of that buying as well. Well, I have it on the rumor mill that there's lots of transactions to be occurring between now and the end of the year. Oh so, so stay tuned, guys, because, I mean... There's more coming, and it's gonna be like a machine gun style. And all I'm hoping for is the new innovation, like we talked about, new people coming into the space with all this stuff. Because of this, everything's being squished together. Something new pops up on the on the fringe, you know. Well, consolidation opens up the room for that, right? So you got the the people on the back end who are like, oh, let's step in and do something different, right? So, <laughs> but I would love to see that move forward in terms of stuff that hasn't been done. Right. Because, like, at some point, there's two, like, if it's the same and it's just a different logo. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, some of these things that are being done could be done better, too. So, there's that. Yeah. 
Okay. That's a long, yeah. Yeah. Some of these things could be done better. Okay. So, here's that. At what cost? At what cost? Do you really think that just because somebody buys everything up, mushes it together, and then lets some of those things to die, those things are still viable solutions to the partners who still need whatever that product X is to work from. But when there's like 80 options per category. Right? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, <coughs> 70 awful options and then uh, one new great option could, be, could make a difference. Okay. All right. Um, I'm opening it for folks. <laughs> okay. You're shutting them out. I'm not shutting anyone out. <laughs> I love it. I love new stuff. Yeah. I'm all for it. Giddy up. Uh, so the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commissions, has a solar winds probe that started earlier in the year. They said it could expose underlying security breaches that were not announced. No. Huh? Really? Shocker. That's not good. No, it's not good, but it's expected. We said that nobody knows what. Right, and we also said it's gonna. We're gonna continue to see new things creep up from this. So, uh, kudos for them to actually figuring it out. We'll see what happens. Uh oh. On on the top of the news on the top of the news sticker right now, four new Microsoft Azure vulnerabilities. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Could 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 maybe we'll pull that on the community call later on. Yeah. <laughs> If anybody knows anything about it. So we'll have to read up on this, but you know, it looks like it's an outside third party. You know, that, that's like the new thing, right? You want to get into the headlines? Be a security researcher. Right. <laughs> right. Right? I mean, that's the that's the new that's the new news. Right. Oh, absolutely. And there's so much to report on. So I wonder how I wonder how much these people actually like bug bounty programs. I don't right. know. Are you asking? No. Oh no. <laughs> no. I'm not interested in asking. To be honest. <laughs> that would be a couple shows worth of uh, information. Yeah. <clears throat> not good. Um, okay. Well, I'm, I'm excited for Big Big. <laughs> I am too. I, I really great. am. I think that it's going to be it could be one of the last ones. I hope not. One but it could be one of the ones. last. Oh, oh, events you yeah. of the year. I, I disagree. Maybe in certain places, but I still think that the IT nation gets off the ground because it's in Florida and it's, that's pushing it. You know, that's, that'll happen. So, all right. Since we're on record, we're recording this, put it out to the, you know, internet waves, okay? What's the under over on attendance for IT Nation? Oh, my God. <coughs> that, <coughs> that's the part you can't, you Come can't on. guarantee. Make, make, make an education guess. No, but what do you think normal number for IT Nation would be? I would if say. There's nothing going on. What do you think? I would think your, your they, they announced in 2020. No, no, no. 2019 was the last right, one. Right, 2019. They did it over Halloween, you remember? Yep. Okay. That was a little bit of a. Uh, yeah, yeah. It ended up, you know, they did some good things for the people that were there with their kids. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. Halloween's a bad time. To do so, it. do you want to use that as your benchmark? So what were the numbers for 2019? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 3,600, 3,700. They say it's a, a, attended. Walk through the door. Right. I didn't right. say stay, stay three days. Right. I said walk through the door. Right, because they had the people with the day passes Correct. and all that. Stuff. Correct. And they definitely had. They definitely. It seemed like they took a hit because some vendors didn't come because of Halloween, and some MSPs didn't come because of Halloween. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm no. Uh, I still think they're going to get solid numbers. I just don't know. I wouldn't be able to pinpoint exact. You know, maybe they get 2,500. Okay. You know, uh, because people are still nervous, and some people will be nervous about going to Florida because they're in that. Uh, they're still nervous about Florida's numbers rising from a COVID perspective, right? Uh, so we all, we've seen that all too much, right? About, you know, going from place to place. But I still believe that people, because of all the other things going down, People are going to want to get out to the event. Now, there are still going to be the people that are also anti connect wise, right? That are going to be like, well, I'm not going just because we're not going to all fold their arms. But I still see the value in going because if you get people out like we're doing here and doing this thing and they have to they can collaborate and be with each other, it's always a win. 
So it doesn't matter. Well, there are some places where it does matter, but in this case, I don't think it matters that you have a beef with ConnectWise or not. The event itself is worth going. To. Okay. So your your number is twenty five hundred. That's my guess. Okay, it's a guess. All right. Well, I mean, it won't take us long to find out. No, not at all. Twenty five hundred, and I think Big Big is what two fifty. Well, Big Big is purposely it's that smaller. Way, right? Yeah. yeah, it's purposely done that way because they're looking for a certain subset of MSPs. No, no, I get, I get it's, what you're doing. And it's MSP owners. No, no, right? I get yeah, it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, so, so and that's going to be a great take too to be able to be in a room full of decision makers. Oh no, it'll, it'll definitely be yeah, good. That that part of it for me is is great. Just being able to be around people like that, you're gonna the juices are gonna be flowing. Everybody's sure, gonna be having sure. great conversations. Sure. sure, I have a feeling there's gonna be a, a pop up event somewhere in October. That's my gut. Yeah, I, I definitely see that coming too. That's as you can see, we improvise pretty well. Yes, here. yes, we just keep on. We just keep on moving back. <laughs> we'll be on the bus. Or, or we're going to be inside the bus. <laughs> um, okay. I think there's going to be a, a, a surprise. I have a gut feel. In October. Yeah. Yes. I agree. I agree. I mean, anything can happen, right? I, I think I think there's a... More Especially than- when someone says, we'll never pull it off. Woo-hoo. The gauntlet has been dropped. They don't even know what you're talking about. I know. Oh, I bet you Darren knows that anybody says to certain people, you can't do it, it's getting done. They still don't know what you're talking about. But that's okay. <laughs> uh, so stay, stay tuned. There's some fluid. Stay there's tuned. some there's some fluidity happening. Yeah. I, I think there's a chance for some magic. Yeah, I agree. We got some uh, some good stuff coming up. So look up all of those airline dollars that you still have. I know you all have them. Keep them handy. Yep. Keep them handy. And remember, Florida is a great place to be right now. Florida? Florida. Mm. It's the same. Okay. A lot, a lot of nice stuff there. It's sunny. It's sunny. Always sunny in Orlando? No. No. Sometimes sunny. Well, it, it rains for like five second intervals. Then yeah. It's sunny again. So. Especially if some guy named Joel's in the parking lot. Hey. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> making it rain. Remember MSP Initiative, we're going to have some special guests on this upcoming week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, so obviously we'll still be on the road. Yes, we will. We'll be broadcasting live with, you know, again, some surprise guests, I think. Right. And um, looking forward to what, what still feels like weeks at a time, but really only hours and days at a time on the road right right today tomorrow then we uh spend the weekend traveling and then we're salt lake city kicking it off next week salt lake city huh? that's the first for me i don't think i've ever been to salt lake it's beautiful it is actually a beautiful place there's just a lot of like really well done landmarks they look like they have the capitol building in salt lake and there's a whole story behind that but it's a big beautiful white building that looks like it's the capitol <laughs> it's really really nice they do a good job there because I think that at one point they really wanted to be seen as the capital. And they did a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of history there, believe it or not. A lot of history. I don't think it made it that far west. No, it didn't. But the buildings that they built are pretty damn nice. Okay. All right. Well, guys, we'll catch you on the flip. Stay tuned. We're, we're posting our journey on all the various feeds. And, uh, and hey, you know, it's a good time. Excellent time. All right. Catch you guys later.